to a motorcycle sitting on the side of a road. Hello, my name is Luke, and in this video, we're having a look at image captioning with transformers. If you're new to the channel, all the code you see is available in my GitHub repo, the link in the description. And this video is a part of a larger PyTorch tutorial series. In the last few videos in the series, we've been looking at transformers, text transformers, and even vision transformers. At the end of the vision transformer video, we talked about how now that we've got both vision and text using the same similar transformer model, it's now really easy to combine the two across the text in the image modality. So what we're gonna see in this video is simply combining the vision encoder we saw from the vision transformer and a text decoder. So we've already seen encoder decoder models for text, so sequence to sequence models for text, but now what we're going to do is we're going to use a vision encoder with the text decoder. What that will allow us to do is to condition the text that we're generating on a sequence from an image encoder. So we'll be able to generate text conditioned on an image. And so that's what we're going to be doing with image captioning. The idea is that we're going to take an image and describe what is in the image. Using what we've learned in the previous videos, it's going to be pretty straightforward to do so. So we're gonna introduce a few new tips and tricks and new tools in order to improve the process and speed up the development. But first we need to download and install the Coco Captions dataset that we're gonna be using here. So you'll need to download the train and validation images from 2014, as well as the 2014 train val annotations. Now, if you wanna use this code as is, you'll also need to just unzip and rename those as described here and put them in a directory somewhere called Coco Captions. Luckily for us, PyTorch actually has a dataset class for the Coco Captions, so we don't need to make our own dataset here. Now our Coco dataset actually has five captions for each image, and because we only want one caption at training time, I've created this additional transform class that will insert into the dataset that will basically randomly sample one of the tokens. Every time we get the same image, we're gonna get a different token. Because we're doing this random cropping of our images, there might be cases where the image actually doesn't contain some bit of information that the caption references. So by making sure we're doing the random crop every time and selecting the random caption every time, our model will hopefully associate the correct piece of information at least some of the time. So let's have a look at some of the examples from this data set. So here we go. A tennis player hitting a ball on a tennis court. Have a look at another one. Two men working on a computer on a wooden table. So those are the sorts of image caption pairs we're gonna be working with here. As we know from the text model videos, we'll need to tokenize this sentence sequence into something that our model can use, usually a sequence of indices that we'll then put into our embedding and get an embedding for each token. Previously, we've built this tokenizer ourselves using a sentence piece tokenizer. However, in this video, we're going to introduce Hugging Face's pre-built tokenizers as a sort of soft introduction into Hugging Face Transformers and Hugging Face in general. So you'll need to install Hugging Face's Transformers so that we can use the auto tokenizer. So Hugging Face is, I guess, a library, a environment, a set of tools that allow us to really simply implement a lot of the state-of-the-art models. So not only does it have model definitions similar to PyTorch's model zoo, but it also has the pre-trained weights for a lot of models across a huge array of domains. So image models, generative models, language models, you have pre-trained weights for all of those things, as well as the tools to train your model from scratch in a simplified way. And luckily for us, most of that, if not all of that, is implemented in PyTorch or has PyTorch support. But for this video, we're just going to use one of the tokenizers from Hugging Faces Transformers library. So the tokenizer we're gonna use is from Distill BERT. So this was the tokenizer used to train a BERT model. BERT is a sort of unsupervised representation learning model. that is either trained to sort of fill in the blanks or to determine whether or not a pair of sentences came from the same source or sort of followed each other in a sequence. So it kind of did classification in that regard. If you want more of an explanation as to what BERT is and how it was trained, you can follow the link to this article here explaining that. But for the purposes of this video, you don't really need to worry about that. We're just gonna create an instance of the model. It'll download if you haven't already. We can see that this BERT tokenizer has 30,000 or just over 30,000 tokens in its vocabulary. 
So we can get the captions from our little test here and put them in our tokenizer. Defining padding true and truncation true, what that will do is it'll pad our tokens to the same size. Return tensors here, PT, we're just specifying a PyTorch tensor is what we want at the output. So we can have a look at our tokenizer. You'll see that it is a dictionary that contains input IDs as well as the attention mask. This attention mask here is actually defining the padding mask that we'll need to use for the uh, key padding mask for our transformer. So the padding tokens to ignore. So we can see that here. The zeros indicate that this token was a padding token. The input IDs is the indices for the actual tokens. So we can have a look at them here. We have our padding tokens and we have normal tokens as well. You can see we have our start of sentence token and there'll also be an end of sentence token. Technically for this vert model, they don't call it a start of sentence and end of sentence token. We have this classification token and a separation token. Because as I said, BERT was doing basically classification, giving two sentences, do they follow each other in the sequence or are they from the same source? This is the classification token, similar to what we saw when we were doing text classification. In those models, we saw we could either use the start of sentence token as our classification token in the sequence, or we could include an additional token within our model that would then become the classification token. Here you can see they've included this into the actual tokenizer. And the separation token here is actually to separate the two sentences or two sequences that we would use to then classify are these two sequences come after each other in a sentence. Here though, we're using these as the start of sentence and end of sentence token. As far as our model is concerned, they can mean whatever we want them to mean. To add some regularization, we're doing the token dropping again. Here though, we're not replacing it with padding. We're gonna replace it with a blank token. This blank token is basically just going to mask this token because we still want this token to be a part of the input sequence. If it was a pad token, it would get ignored by the key padding mask. So it's just gonna be a mask token. The tokenizer actually has quite a few tokens at the start that are basically empty tokens. So for example, if we decode zero is padding, one is called unused, all the way up to like 990, I think. These are all just called unused. So they don't really define any word or text in our sentence. So we can use them if we want to repurpose this tokenizer for some action or some other special token. So I'm just gonna use index one, which is the very first blank token. And I'm gonna be using that as my masking token to basically just remove or hide certain input tokens in our sequence. Just to add, as I said, some regularization. Because our sequences are quite short and our model is going to be quite large due to the large size of our images, it does seem to overfit quite readily. So adding that masking in the input sequence prevents our model from just memorizing what comes next based on the previous tokens in the sequence. Okay, so on to our actual model architecture. As I said, all we're doing here is doing our encoder-decoder architecture, except the encoder is now going to be a vision encoder from our vision transformer. So a lot of this we've already seen before. We're going to patchify our image, split it into patches, treat those as our embeddings for our text. We're gonna have our sinusoidal position embedding. And then for the images, we'll have a fixed learnable embedding for our positions. We have our attention blocks as we've seen before. The transformer block, again, multi-purpose for both the decoder and the encoder. Our decoder is exactly the same as our decoder from our encoder decoder or our decoder only model. And our vision encoder, again, is identical to our vision encoder from our vision transformer. For the overall model, our vision encoder decoder, you can see we have our input image the target sequence, as well as the padding mask for the text sequence. We don't need a padding mask for our images because they're all going to be the same size. So we pass the images into our encoder. We get the encoded sequence for our image. We pass the target sequence and the encoder sequence to our decoder. The decoder will have its self-attention with causal masking. It'll do the cross-attention to pull information from the encoder output, which is the image information. And then we'll have the prediction for the next token in the sequence. So this is pretty straightforward. We've seen this before. What I want to introduce in this video is the PyTorch's pre-built encoder decoder layers in order to build a transformer model. So probably won't surprise you that PyTorch has pre-built transformer encoder and decoder blocks. So for our decoder, we're gonna use the PyTorch transformer decoder layers, and we're gonna use those to build a PyTorch transformer decoder. 
All the rest is pretty much identical to the model that we built from scratch. We just need to define these two layers to replace our transformer block. So here, this transformer decoder layer defines a single block within our transformer decoder. Like we've seen before, a transformer is just a repeating sequence of these blocks. We need to define the hidden size, so the embedding size, the number of heads for our multi-headed attention. This dim feed forward is the dimension of the middle layer for our MLP. So we normally expand the dimensions in that hidden layer for the MLP. We also have dropout and batch first here, similar to the multi-headed attention. This is just saying that the first dimension in our tensor is the batch dimension. We then pass this single layer to the transformer decoder block. So here we pass it there and we define the number of layers. So PyTorch will copy this one layer, we'll just duplicate it number layer of times. So it won't just use the same layer over and over, it'll duplicate or copy the parameters multiple times and create multiple instances of this same layer. So we'll have unique parameters for each block. And all we need to do in the forward pass is replace that for loop of our blocks with just passing the inputs to the decoder layers. Here, TGT's target, that's the embeddings from the input sequence. Memory, this is the encoder output. Then we have the target mask, which is gonna be the causal mask. So we need to still define the causal mask. We can have a decoder without causal masking. So here we're going to define this target mask and that's again the mask on the attention matrix. We're going to have the key padding mask for the target. So that's the input sequence padding mask. And also we can have a padding mask for the encoder. But here for our model, because we're using a vision encoder, this is always just going to be none. So you'll see here, it's just always going to be none and we're never going to pass anything for that. For the vision encoder, again, very similar. We have a transformer encoder layer and we define pretty much the same thing. This encoder layer will only have self-attention. It's not gonna have any of the cross-attention. And again, we define a transformer encoder by providing it with that single encoder layer and saying how many of these blocks do we want. And again, we just need to replace that for loop with the encoder layers block. As for the overall model, it is very similar to what we saw before. So we can create an instance of our model. It's very similar to creating an instance of our encoder decoder. It's just that we now need to define a patch size as well because we have a vision encoder. We have the image size channels in so we can work out the number of values in each patch. The tokenizers vocab size so we can have an embedding per token. The patch size for the image, the number of layers. So that's the number of blocks for our encoder and decoder. Here I've defined it as a tuple so we can change the size the encoder decoder separately and we have the embedding size and the number of heads for our multi-headed attention we have our optimizer and we're going to be training with mixed precision and we have our cross entropy loss and our token drop so we can see here that our model is approximately 18 million parameters so our data set is only 40,000 data points so it does have a tendency as i say to overfit if we aren't doing our regularization so our training loop is very similar to our encoder decoder training loop except we now have images for our encoder so we have our captions and our images. We'll tokenize the images as we saw with our hugging face tokenizer. We'll get the input tokens as the input IDs and the padding mask comes from our attention mask. So this is the padding mask we'll use for the key padding. So to generate the output target sequence, again, we're just gonna shift the input sequence and add an additional add token on the end. That's gonna be the targets and the input is just gonna be the input tokens. Once we've done the token dropping, we pass into our caption model the images, the target sequence, as well as the padding masks. We get our prediction and we do our cross entropy loss, again, removing the padding tokens from the loss because we don't wanna penalize our model for not predicting the pad token correctly. It also means that if we're looking at our loss, it's not a good indicator for how good our model is because so much of the input is actually gonna be pad tokens, whereas the hard part is predicting the non-pad tokens, the real tokens. So we'll do our backpropagation and our optimization step. We're also going to do a epoch of evaluation to get an evaluation loss. I've already trained this model for the 200 epochs. It did take quite a few hours, about five or six hours to train. And you can see we have our evaluation and training loss. So our evaluation loss is actually this one here. You can see that token drop actually influenced the loss quite a bit, but it did mean that we could prevent our model from overfitting. So let's see some testing. So we can get a test image from our evaluation set. The first one here, a shoe rack with some shoes and a dog sleeping on them. So I guess it's the dog here. We have some shoes. So we can tokenize this input and we'll create that start of sentence token, which was 101. Again, that's what we're gonna provide our decoder with first to 
prompted to complete the sentence to generate the caption. So very similar to the encoder decoder model, except our encoder now takes an input image. We get the input image embeddings, pass that to our decoder and get it to generate the next token in the sequence one by one until we've completed the entire sequence. Now we can combine all the tokens in the sequence and get our output. We have a cat sitting on a leather chair with a red ribbon. I guess it's mistaken this for a cat. Kind of hard to see what it is with this 128 by 128 image. It's mistaken this red shoe is a, is a red ribbon. So we can try and generate another caption for the same image. The cat is laying on a red bicycle. So Ken still thinks this is a cat and may have mistaken this for a bicycle, I guess. It really likes the red of the shoe here. Let's try a different image. So here we've got motorcycle park in a parking lot. So try and generate a caption for that. So a motorcycle sitting on the side of a road. There we go, we can try and generate another caption for this. A row of motorcycles parked in a row. There we go, let's try another image. So here we have a white dog lays next to a bicycle on the sidewalk. The bicycle is kind of cut off in this image here. Let's see what our model thinks. A fire hydrant on the side of a sidewalk. I'm not sure where the fire hydrant is. Let's try again. A fire hydrant is painted white and black. I wonder if it thinks that there's a fire hydrant because there's a dog. Maybe dogs are near fire hydrants in a lot of the images. Fire hydrant on the side of the street. Seems to think there's a fire hydrant somewhere. Let's try another image. So here we have a loft bed with a dresser underneath it. So this is a bedroom scene. A white refrigerator is in a small wooden kitchen. Maybe it thinks this is a refrigerator. A microwave with a microwave in a kitchen. So maybe it thinks it's a microwave now. A microwave with a sink in a room. So it's identified a room maybe, but maybe it thinks this is a microwave. We might get better results with a larger image. Maybe this image is a bit too small to make out some of the details. But let's try one final image. So here we go, this is quite a complicated scene. A man and a woman staring at two giraffes. So we've center cropped this image. So there may have been a man and a woman there. We don't expect our model to probably pick that out. We do have a giraffe at a zoo somewhere. The giraffe is standing outside looking at a camera. So it's identified the giraffe. Try again. Giraffe standing next to a wooden fence. Giraffe is standing in a room next to a wall. There we go. It's at least identified the giraffe. All right, so you can train your own model, play around with the parameters and see what results you can get. But hopefully you've learned something there, seeing that now we have this image and text models within the same transformer architecture domain, it's quite easy to connect them together. And so if you can tokenize any sort of input, maybe audio data, we can now combine it with our text and our image data to create a multimodal model and produce outputs across those domains. That's all I wanted to cover in this video today. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so to stay tuned for future videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.